Hey, listen, today is a really important topic I'm going to share with you about how to identify a religious spirit. It's one of the topics that I get the most comments and questions about when I teach on it. Don't miss it. Come along with me. Let's get in the Word. Let's learn and grow together. I am Charlana Kelly, and this is Engage for Influence. Today we're going to talk about the religious spirit. This is one of the topics that I get comments and questions on the most over the years as I've taught it. I think that people want to have the wisdom and discernment to recognize a religious spirit and they also want to know how to handle that thing when it shows up. And you know, unfortunately, where's a religious spirit going to show up, it shows up in the church, in people who say they love the Lord, who I believe are believers. Perhaps they're immature. You know, when, when we're young in the Lord, we do have to learn the ways of God. And sometimes we can be like Saul of Tarsus and get up on our high horse and persecute other believers in the church. But God always corrects us. And one of the things about about you and I as believers, we have got to be able to receive correction. In fact, like Proverbs says, we ought to love correction. I remember Gloria Copeland saying one time regarding that scripture over in Proverbs, she said, I am not stupid. I love correction. See, if we have a heart that is teachable, that is pliable, then when we make mistakes as we are going along and serving God in different places, and capacities, then, then we are able to learn and grow and rise up and be the best of what He's created us to be. We'll fulfill all of His good plan for our life if we're teachable. But here's the thing about a religious spirit. They're probably not teachable. There are some people thinking of the parable of the tares and the wheat. Uh, just going to paraphrase here, but when Jesus taught on that parable, He said, you know, when you go out and you sow your seed into the ground, your, your seed is going to rise up and produce the fruit or the vegetable that it's created to produce, but they're going to be tares also. The enemy comes in and he sows tares among the wheat. He actually said, Jesus said, do not pull up the tares leave them there because in the time to come, now this is talking about in the day of judgment, the angels are going to come in, they're going to reap the wheat, which is going to be those of us that stayed steady and followed Christ and, and, and finished our race in faith. He's, the angels are going to come in and reap the wheat and then they're, they're, they're actually going to pull up the tares first and the tares, those that don't produce fruit, those that that said they were of God, said they believed in Jesus Christ, but they were demonic. They were destroying the body of Christ. They were uh, doing things contrary to the word and, and really actually influencing and hurting others in the process of it. But they're literally going to be plucked up out of the ground and bundled together and thrown into the fire. So, you know, we have to understand that that we labor with people in teaching and training them, helping them to be discipled as we share the truth in love. Love is the key here. As we share the truth in love, helping to build them up on their most holy faith as we, we pray with them and for them. But there are going to be some people that just are not, they're just not going to change. And really and truly, I would question very humbly if they've really ever received Christ. There's another part of scripture, I believe Paul said this, that those kinds of people, they just come to wear you out. They just come to challenge you. They just come to uh, question you, to judge you, to speak against what you're doing. And they're, they're just there to wear you out. So you got to identify the religious spirit and then be able to discern between 
uh, whether they are someone that's just immature and you can pour into them and how you how you discern that is you go to them speak the truth and love to them try to help them if they'll receive the correction then you can walk on with them if they don't then really and truly they they need to go on their own way now this could be in the church it could be in your in your family it could be in your your small groups it could be on the job it could be anywhere that we run across a religious spirit and so we we really need to know how to handle them i want to start first with 10 signs of a religious spirit but uh before i do that actually i want to read to you out of of uh, 1 John 4 verses 1 through 3, John the Apostle writes here how to identify someone who is operating not only in a religious spirit, but they're actually a false prophet or a false teacher as well. And we're going we're gonna to talk next week about the 10 signs of a false prophet. You don't want to miss it. I'm actually even going to share my testimony about how I handled a false prophet that showed up in my life and tried to prophesy over my life many years ago. I want you to know how to handle them when they show up. Amen. Let's read 1 John 4, 1 through 3 here out of the New King James Version. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Amen. And so that's talking about the, the false prophets. You could put in there false teachers, people who, who are demonically influenced, that are infiltrating the body of Christ. So we need to identify them. We need to know how to handle them. And we need to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might and not fear these things. We've been given power and authority over them. So 10 signs of a religious spirit are number one, they find fault with others, never themselves. So when, when you try to share the truth in love with them, they can never receive that they were wrong. They were always right. It was the other person who had the problem or who was incorrect, whatever it was, they're never wrong. Number two, they tear down what they believe is wrong with others, but never build up. So they're not ever edifying. They're not ever celebrating. They're not ever really rejoicing in the body of Christ uh, and promoting others. They will, they will tear them down, never build others up and they destroy what they cannot control. So their, their, their primary purpose is to control people. And they do this in a variety of ways, and we'll see this in just a moment. They're unable to receive correction is number three. Number four, they refuse to receive from man, saying they get their instructions from God. And they won't listen to counsel. They're, and when, when we learn it's wise, to receive counsel. Wis there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. I'm not saying you should ask everybody what they think, but you should surround yourself with people who, who are wiser than you are, <laughs> who you can go to. They've done this for a long time, maybe. Uh, maybe they are in a position of leadership or just a friend or someone you recognize is more mature in the things of God than you are, go to them and ask for their counsel. There's wisdom in that. Number five is they believe God has appointed them to fix everything wrong in others. Listen, that's the job of the Holy Spirit. You cannot be a Holy Spirit to somebody else. The Holy Spirit is the one who convicts. He does, he does that primarily directly with the person, but if he has to, God, if God has to bring someone in from the outside to confront them, he will do it. We see that with King David and the prophet when he was confronted about murdering uh, Bathsheba's husband. And so these people, 
they are just all about pointing out and complaining and judging what's wrong in others. Number six, they are intolerant of other people's weaknesses. Remember what Galatians 6 2 says. It says that, that by bearing one another's burdens, we so fulfill the law of Christ. So they refuse to do this, they refuse to do what they're called to do. And they're intolerant of them as well. Number seven, they always want recognition. Oh my goodness. This is similar to what we're going to see on the false prophet, false teacher side of things. They are always self-promoting. They're always drawing people to themselves and they, they want that recognition. They want that control and in their domination of others, they will destroy them. Number eight, suspicious of any new move of God. They don't speak against and I say to that, don't speak against what you do not know or what you do not understand. This is really dangerous because Isaiah, the Lord spoke to Isaiah, God spoke to him and he said, behold, I do a new thing. Can you not perceive it? Now, one, one thing we know is God doesn't operate outside of his word. So if, if things are contrary to the word, you know, we just need to wait and see. I love how the Pharisee uh, handled uh, the the two apostles that were brought drug into court uh, in the beginning of the book of Acts. I want to just share this briefly as an example. It's just such a perfect example where as all of them except this one wanted to throw them into prison, maybe even kill them. He steps forward and he says, listen, wait a minute here. You know, if this is of God, time will bear it out to be true. If it's not, then it won't. Let it go. Let them go. And let's, let's see if this is really of God or not. And so time always will bear out if something is truly born of the spirit and is of God. We don't have to step in and try to be the savior of everyone, the Holy Spirit of everyone, judging, pointing fingers, all of that. Listen, we need to remove the plank from our own eye before we try to help somebody else remove a speck from theirs. That's wisdom. And so don't speak against what you don't understand. They always, number eight is, or excuse me, that was number eight. Number nine is they always glory in the past. You know, listen, God's doing something today. God's going to be doing something tomorrow. Let's get some fresh manna. Let's get some fresh anointing from the Father. Let's get some fresh perspective of who He is. There's so many layers in language and in, in how the Bible, what it's actually speaking about. And so be a student of the Word. Dig in. Do exactly what the Word of God tells us to do. You can learn and grow in many new ways through the word and with the help of the spirit and come closer and closer and closer in your relationship with God and Jesus as you do that. It's a beautiful thing. And also number 10, they will not join anything outside of themselves. Boy, is that a key because why you've got to come to them so they can control you so they can get the recognition and feed off of that that they want to feed off of that they're just really full of pride and arrogance and foolishness and you know i've always said that the height of arrogance is ignorance and so they're totally ignorant of the glory of god the presence and power of god and so usually there there aren't going to be a lot of blessings surrounding them although we also also see Jesus, uh, you know, having someone approach him when the door shut and say, we cast out demons in your name. We sat with you. We sat with you. You taught us. And he says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I do not know who you are. So there will be signs that follow some uh, of these demonic things, and especially of the false prophet in the coming Antichrist. They will perform many signs. But in this hour, we need to recognize them for what they are. And uh, if you are walking with the Holy Spirit, then he's going to show you exactly what they are and put distance between yourself. So I want to read now out of 3 John 9 through 11, a good example of a religious spirit. I'm going to add some definition for emphasis here so you understand exactly what's being said. And these are great uh, examples of how this spirit operates through men w and women. I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence, he was always wanting recognition, who loves to have preeminence among them, 
does not receive us. In other words, Paul, or excuse me, John had raised up this body of believers, but but because of diatrophies, those people could not receive him. He wouldn't allow it. He refused it. Verse 10 says, Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does. He's going to confront him with the truth. As he prates against us with malicious words, he attacks them publicly. And not content with that alone, he himself does not receive the brethren. He will not fellowship with the brethren and forbids those who are with him to do it. And if they do, he puts them out of the church. So he wants to control everyone around him. And John concludes here, he says, Beloved, do not imitate what is evil. This is evil. A religious spirit is full of evil. But do what is good. Imitate what is good. He who loves good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. And so there's a question here as to whether or not this person really is born again, actually, and has received Jesus as Lord and Savior in their life. And that's why Jesus will eventually, those who are still operating in this religious spirit and have been walking among the believers, may have been ministering and, and doing signs and wonders. Remember, the devil comes as an angel of light. So he comes with the word of God. He is able to perform signs and wonders, but it's not in the name of Jesus. It's not according to the word of God. So we have to follow the Holy Spirit all the more. Last episode, I talked about having your prayer language, having the gift of tongues and praying in the spirit so that you're praying out the perfect will of God. You know, if we're not walking with the spirit, we're going to have a hard time identifying these people. And so we've got to walk in the spirit so we can identify this and then have the wisdom of God to know how to handle it. And, and so I just pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Number one, if you have in your immaturity in Christ, if you have these religious spirit signs happening in your life right now because of immaturity, I pray right now you would repent and ask the Holy Spirit to help you root those things out of your heart. Ask God to, uh, the love of God's already been shed abroad in your, in your heart through Christ Jesus, but, but ask Him to stir up the love of God in you, and through you, for you, and for others, so that you can begin to put others ahead of yourself instead of having others all come to you to give you recognition and all of that. I just declare in Jesus' name you're free from any kind of religious spirit that might be harassing you and trying to get you to disobey God and go in the way of the flesh. And then I pray also that God would just wholly fill and flood you with His love so that you could prove not only to others but even walking in the love of God proving to yourself how much he loves you as you go about doing the works of Jesus. This is where God gets maximum glory, that, that we're not trying to bring glory to ourselves. We want to bring glory to God by doing what he has commissioned us, anointed us, empowered us, and sent us to go and do. Amen? And, and so this is where we want to be focused in on walking in the fullness that God has for us. Now listen, next week I'm going to share my testimony about how I handled a false prophet that I came face to face with in a conference many years ago. You don't want to miss that. So mark this time, this channel, and be sure to tune in. And also, I'd love to hear from you. So if you go to my website, charlannakelly.org, on the top link, there's a link that says, Ask Charlanna. Click on that. Send me a prayer request. Send me a praise report. Also, let me know if there's something you want me to teach on, if there's a comment you have to make about any of the programs you've watched. Also, know this, that if you do that, we will send you a free ebook that will help you along your way in your walk with Christ. I want you to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, I love you so much. And I pray that 
those of you that may not know Christ at this moment that you would find him it's just as simple as acknowledging him as the Son of God who came in the flesh who walked this earth in perfection he went to the cross paid the price for the sins of mankind both past present and future that means everything you've done everything you've said even the things that you should have and didn't his blood has atoned for those things and you are forgiven as you receive him as Lord and Savior and so ask him into your heart receive him ask Holy Spirit to come in and fill and flood you and and begin your walk with him today if you did that I'd love to hear from you as well I know that God has great plans for you and a purpose for your future as you walk with him those things will be discovered if you have access to the word get in the word read the word make that a daily part of your life so that you can be fed by the greatest riches that God has given to man I thank you for tuning in today. I love you so dearly. Until we meet again, Godspeed and God bless.